Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Since my last update we have had the first named storm of the season, Storm Amy. But much quieter conditions have already returned, so are they here to stay as we go through the next two weeks? Let's see. Now this is the picture at 18 GMT on Tuesday the 7th of October. There are some patchy outbreaks of rain in the north and those are sinking southwards and fragmenting further. But the thing to look out for is high pressure because that's going to be building from the south, the southwest through the coming days, meaning the risk of rain is increasingly confined to the north and the northwest. And by the weekend, high pressure is centred more or less slap bang over the UK. It's a settled and quiet picture in more or less all areas, just a chance that there could be some rain in the far north. And there is a little bit of variance between the different computer models, but the theme is for high pressure to become dominant. That continues to be the case really as I run this sequence through to conclusion. Although the high pressure is migrating towards Scandinavia, perfectly possible at this time of year, but of course as we all know come December, January and February, high pressure areas seem to develop an allergy towards that part of the world for some reason. Nonetheless, if this does happen what we'll see is more of an east or a southeasterly feed developing, but it's staying dry basically winds could be picking up a little bit. You can see the isobars becoming closer together there, especially in southern and central areas. But all in all, the message is settled. Here is the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence. The UK inside the red circle, the mottled shaded area shows the jet. It heads northwards through the coming days, allowing these yellows and oranges to move up across the UK. They are used, of course, to indicate warm air aloft. Now, what does all that mean in terms of the day-to-day -day weather which we can expect down at the surface? Let's have a quick look. This is a picture on Wednesday, temperatures 17, 18 or 19 in the south, several deg degrees lower as you move, in, move into Northern England, Scotland and Northern Ireland. I'm not going to talk about temperatures too much in the subsequent charts because they don't really change significantly. The patchy outbreaks of rain are clearing southwards on Wednesday, then it's mostly dry, much of the UK, but there is a damp theme there in the northwest. That will continue to be the case through the following days, at least for a time. This is the view on a Thursday. You can see some light patchy rain there in Northern Ireland, northwestern Britain. On Friday, cloud amounts varying. A reasonable amount of sunshine if this is taken at face value, but a few spots of rain in the thicker areas of cloud. Saturday and um, the UKV actually shows the potential for more significant rain there in the far north. The GFS wasn't so keen on the idea but of course when you've got different computer models showing different details you do have to keep up to date with the short range forecasts. With that said the key message is that it's going to be staying settled over most of the country. Temperatures as I said I'm not going to talk about a great deal because there's not really much to say. Using the data from the GFS model for the next two days, Sunday and Monday, it's a settled picture. This is quite optimistic about the amounts of sunshine, it may well be overdoing that. I think there will be more cloud in the mix. Nonetheless, in areas where the sun, sh sun shines, it should be pleasantly warm through the days. Strong winds were a theme last week. I don't think they're going to be a major player through the coming week. Nonetheless, it could be quite windy at times in the north, gusts of around 40 miles an hour there being forecast by the UKV on Thursday morning. Temperatures through the nights, well, cloud amounts will be varying, so although there is the potential for it to be chilly at times, this is, I'm just using this to illustrate the lower values through the week which may develop. This is on Saturday according to the UKV. So a chance of some patchy ground frost but not widespread by any means. That's the message I, I would say. And the temperatures from the Mogrex G ensemble plot for London. Maybe a little bit of a downwards trend towards the end of the first week. The spread increasing but as I said several times already there isn't really a great deal to say about temperatures. And the rainfall graph for London, more or less dry, just one or two of the runs going for little bits of rain at times, a few spits and spots in the breeze, but very much a settled pattern. A few more rain spikes on Aberdeen, but not a huge number and lots of dry weather. So even 
in the north of UK the focus is on it becoming more and more settled as we go through the first week. Here are the rain aggregates from the ECM and GFS models for the first five days. Still a significant amount in Western Scotland, but elsewhere very low totals. The ECM on the left is a little bit higher, but it's using slightly older model data. Hence, there's an extra 12 hours there at the start of a period, which is helping those totals increase a little bit in the northern half of the UK. The message here is virtually no rain in much of southern, central and eastern Britain. And moving forwards to the 10 day charts, that's not a mistake. I'll just go back so you can see that these charts are actually changing if you look at the headers on them. But the amounts of rain are not. It's staying completely dry in much of the UK through the day five to den day 10 part of the forecast period. So high pressure could be expected to remain dominant if these are correct. But in more general terms, what the deterministic models show towards the end of the first week. This is the GFS on Tuesday the 14th. The high pressure becoming centered a little bit further northeastwards as I've already mentioned but it, it, so it's dry and settled and at this point at least the yellow and orange shading is indicating warm air aloft. The Canadian model similar, the German icon similar, the European ECM this also has high pressure but building a little bit further northwards already and there's this colder air moving down its eastern flank over Scandinavia into continental Europe and possibly starting to just feed into eastern parts of Britain. But the artificial intelligence version of the same model is a little bit different in terms of upper air temperatures. High pressure is certainly very dominant but it has very warm air moving northwards almost like a plume style pattern. Finally, the UK Met Office Global, it also has high pressure close to the UK, maybe just starting to drift a little bit northwards, northeastwards, and that colder air moving down across Scandinavia and into Central Europe. So some differences in the details, but a very, very consistent picture overall, which is that high pressure will be dominant by the end of the first week. So dry and quiet conditions could be expected across the whole or more or less the whole of the UK. So daytime temperature is probably quite reasonable, the chance of some chilly nights and patchy ground frosts, but much would depend on the extent of cloud cover. There could be some patchy fog around as well. Will that settled theme continue as we head through the second week? Well, of course, at this range, it's just about the trends and the probabilities using the ensemble data here is the 16-day GEFS ensemble graphs for London. The upper one shows 850 HPA temperatures and the mean there, the thick purple line, is above the thick black line, the 30-year average, more or less throughout the entire period, dipping a little bit later in the second week. But more importantly is the risk of rain, because to begin with there are no spikes at all, so none of the runs in the ensemble are forecasting rain through the first few days, but once we reach the 17th, 18th and 19th, spikes do start to appear, and actually by the end of the second week it could be rather unsettled if this is correct. There are quite a number of spikes showing up there in the last few days, something to keep an eye on. The um, ECM ensemble, the artificial intelligence version of it at least, has a lower 850 HPA temperatures in the London area, so very close to the average throughout the second week, maybe something of a downwards trend, but all in all, nothing much to say there. Now, two meter temperatures using the data from the GEFS once more. Actually, these are showing through the days at least something of a downwards trend and that could well be related to the transition to more and settled conditions, cloud and rain through the second half of each second week becoming more likely because the overnight temperatures, there isn't a distinct trend here. If anything, they may actually be rising a little bit through the second half of the second week as those more unsettled conditions begin to develop. So more cloud, more rain, slightly higher values through the days, uh, slightly lower values through the days, slightly higher values through the nights. 
Manchester, a very similar story to London, risk of rain increasing. The two meter temperature trends for Manchester also following a similar pattern, although the overnight lows, a bit more nuanced there because towards the very end, the amount of dark green starts to increase. Those are going for values of between one and five degrees. So perhaps some, perhaps this is very speculative, maybe some colder polar maritime air beginning to come into the mix, at least on a few of the runs in the ensemble model. Finally, a Glasgow, and here the trend is more clearly downwards at the 850 HPA level, values starting above the average according to most runs in the model, but through the second half there of the second week, the ensemble mean becomes close to or even a tad below the 30 year average. The risk of rain following a similar trend to the Manchester and London graphs. It's dry to begin with, but then it's turning increasingly unsettled as we head towards the end. The two meter temperature data tables for Glasgow. The days become cooler, once more associated with a growing chance of cloud and rain, I suspect. The nights, there isn't a very strong trend here, perhaps towards the very end, a few of the runs are also taking values down a little bit lower, maybe for similar reasons to ones that I've discussed in the Manchester updates. Rainfall, using the ECM ensemble charts, these show the chance of five millimetres or more of rainfall in on the first three days of the second week. They're actually quite remarkable, at least the two on the left are, the first two, virtually 0% across the majority of the UK. I don't think I've actually seen that before at this range. By day 10, so the third chart, the chance is around 10 to 20 percent to the north and the west of the UK, but it's remaining close to zero in central, southern and eastern parts of England. Moving forwards, and now things are shifting. The percentage chance of significant amounts of rain is increasing, especially in the north and the northwest. It would suggest the Atlantic could be starting to break through during this period. And that message is reinforced by the mean surface level pressure data table for York. The oranges in these columns indicate runs which are strongly high pressure dominated, but their number is decreasing through the first few days. And notably, towards the end of the second week, the amount of blue starts to climb quite a lot. And blue is used to indicate runs which are strongly low pressure dominated. So if this is correct, it does seem as though we will be seeing a transition through the second week, a very settled start, potentially an unsettled or even very unsettled end to the second week. It would be quite a big change were it to happen. It's not a given by any means. At this sort of range, it's impossible to be confident. And more often than not, computer models tend to push back the breakdown to unsettled conditions with high pressure sticking around a little bit longer. Nonetheless, the next named storm is of course Bram, and that has been named, I believe, in honor of Bram Stoker, the Dracula writer. And there is just a chance, nothing more at this moment, but it could coincide nicely with Halloween. That would be that would be something to look out for. Now here's the mean surface level pressure chart for Friday the 17th of October from the GEFS. So it's, av it's averaging out all the runs in the model. At this point at least, high pressure is staying dominant. It's centered probably just to the east of the UK. The European ensemble, high pressure also dominant, maybe cooler air aloft. So more runs possibly bringing in an easterly flow with that colder plunge moving down into central Europe and being then drifting across towards the UK on that easterly. But it is, of course, very early and I wouldn't expect anything of note. But the key message here is it looks still settled at this point. The unsettled conditions probably just reserved for the second half of the second week. So to summarize week one, a band of cloud and patchy rain clears southwards. 
There will then be further rain for a time in the far north and northwest, but elsewhere it becomes dry. Cloud amounts vary, and in sunny spells it should feel pleasantly warm. Week two, a dry and quiet start. There could be some chilly nights with some patchy ground frost and fog. Then the signal is for it to become more unsettled in all areas later on. Now, if the prospect of dry and quiet weather doesn't excite you a great deal, here is something which could do the trick. These are the latest weather analogues which are available on the Weather Outlook website. They are generated by comparing today's Northern Hemisphere 500 HPA profile with the same date in every year going back all the way to 1948. Look at the best matches. Number one, 1962. Number two, 2006. Number three, 1995. Number four, 1978. And of those of you with a keen eye and a little bit of weather history, knowledge under your belt will quickly recognize something significant here. 1962. Well, 1962-63 was the coldest winter, I think, for 200 years in the UK. So that's the best current match with 2025. Number four, 1978. 1978-79 was the third coldest winter of the 20th century, behind 1962-63 and 1947. Number three, 1995 was also a cold winter in the UK. So, if you're hoping for a cold and snowy winter, the seasonal computer models don't offer you a great deal of hope at the present time, but perhaps these analogues do. Remember, you can check them out every day to see how they update. And another thing to look out for is a brand new feature on the Weather Outlook website called the Signal. It's basically a live feed, and on it you'll be able to see short videos presented by myself, as well as animations and static uh, charts from the latest computer model runs. It's a really, really nice new feature on the website. The URL is there. Do take a look at it. So, uh, there we have it. A lot of quiet weather is on the way in the next two weeks, although there are some indications of a significant change through the second half of each second week, but as I've already mentioned, it is too early to be confident about that happening. But do keep up to date with developments. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. As ever, if you did, then please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. In that way, you'll really be helping the development of the Weather Outlook on YouTube and you'll not miss any of my future updates. Thanks very much now. Bye.